Hey guys, as promised I am making a uh, video on gravity generators and gravity fields in general. I'm going to start off by explaining um, some of the mechanics behind gravity fields or well, uh, the size and shape and how they work. Then I'm going to show an example I made and finish off by making uh, a little gravity contraption. So yeah, let's go. Um, well, as you possibly know, gravity fields are made by gravity generators and they attract um, most floating objects except for actually placed blocks. Uh, so that means no for ships, both small and large, except for powered mass blocks, uh, which are specially made to be affected by gravity. Uh, when something enters a gravitational field, they will, well, if the gravity generator, you can set the field strength down here. If the gravity generator is set to 1 kg, that means that an object that is uh, gravity enabled, which is not connected to another object, will accelerate at uh, with 9.8 meters per second. Uh, per second. So after 2 seconds, it will be at a speed of barely 20 meters per second. Um, so yeah, one of the most useful shortcuts when making things with gravity fields is uh, Shift, Alt and F12. It'll enable the physics view thing. I uh, can't remember what it's called actually. But that will also enable us to see a box where the gravity field is at. Now the smallest you can make gravity field is 1 meter by 1 meter. That's the same as two small blocks, um, well in length and width. Um, and when you increase the size of gravitational field they will increase in increments of 0.5 meters, uh, but the numerical value will only increase in increments of 1. You can see uh, the 0.5 meter increments either via the uh, power usage or by seeing that it is slightly moving without actually uh, changing the number. So now we are at 1 meters, 1.5 and 2 meters and 2.5 etc. Um, the gravity generator's field is slightly offset since the gravity generator is one block high the field won't start in the middle of a block so if I increase the field it will go a bit more in this direction than it will in this one. Um, and of course, well not of course, but when you increase the field size, like I know for a fact that 13 meters will should cover about up to the second yellow block. Um, and I'll just explain something in a moment. So there we go, yeah. But uh, when you increase the field's uh, length by one meter, it will only increase by half a meter in each direction because it is the total width you are increasing and not the width on the one side or height or whatever. So if you want to move this field 2.5 meters this way, which is the length of a large block, you have to increase the field size by five meters. And I think I did a bit more than 5, but yeah, that's about right. As I said, it's offset, so you won't get exactly uh, exact measurements with it. But it's generally good to know. Oh yeah, for information, large blocks are 2.5 meters uh, in height and width and depth, and small blocks are 0 0.5. Um, I think that's about it for the basic gravity generators. If you have any more questions about them, feel free to ask and I'll try to answer them. Uh, gravity generators have a lot of applications. Um, for example, well, obviously for holding things on one surface, but also for transport. Um, this is actually something I made for another video, which I have cut up and attached to a ship. Basically, it's gravity grappling. We have gravity generators on each side of this, preventing 
uh, I'm going to turn on grout fields and it's going to look confusing but I'll try to explain so yeah prepare for a lot of boxes now uh, in case you can see exactly what this does I will try to explain we got the grab generators why can't I get that box to disappear that's really annoying okay we got grab generators on each end pushing in towards the middle that will prevent items that are grab enabled from floating uh, outwards and we've got Grout generators on the sides as well, making slightly thinner fields because this was made for another application, which will keep the whatever object goes inside from going outside these two fields because they're pushing in towards the center. So those four fields combined will keep them. Oh, that's so hard to see from here. But basically, inside these three blocks in the center here. And finally, I've got three generators on the bottom, um, holding it down vertically. That's the field you can see up on top, and the one below, and this one below it. The reason I have three fields is because grabbed fields affect each other. Um, having two fields in the sec can either increase the field's uh, strength if they are in the same direction, cancel them out, creating zero gravity if they are in opposite direction, or angle um, the way you are pulled in gravity if they are angled to each other. I will explain that a bit more later. But the reason I have the tree, as I said, is um, let's imagine that the first generator is um, pulling downwards. Um, and I make it up to here. Then I add another generator to push upwards because I want to keep the stuff uh, right between them. But since the the one pushing upwards is already intersecting the one pushing downwards, there will just simply be zero gravity down here, uh, and a pulling down force down uh, a force pulling down about here. So I've added a third, uh, cancelling out the middle here but creating two G's down here in uh, the force pushing upwards which means since the grout generator pulling downwards is cancelling one of those G's there will be one G pulling upwards here zero G in the middle and then up top there will be a uh, force pushing downwards it's a bit confusing it's um, uh, easier to see if you actually attempt to build it from the bottom um, but I got a little demonstration of what it does. Um, so I've mined a bit of ore and thrown it into this and I hope I remember to set up the number of objects in the world. Let's just see. So as you can see the ore is contained within the fields and as they're bouncing into each other they're losing speed and will slowly settle giving you an idea of the general size of the field well general shape also um, and now we've got a bit of lag because there are a bunch of objects they look really weird anyhow as you can see um, we got that three block long field and about one block in width and height um, which is one of the applications of one of the great applications of gravity fields is the ability to move stuff around. Now this one has really thin uh, side fields so I'm not able to um, turn too quickly without it, it popping out. But as you can see it stays inside and that's great. So yeah, and some of it is going out. Right, we're back. And now I am going to show you a little of a bit about how gravitational fields um, put at an angle to each other affect the angle of the gravitational field. So I am going to start by putting a gravita gravity generator in the middle of each uh, flat section here. 
Let's just get a cockpit so we can actually control them. And now we've got some huge boxes. Oh yeah, that's also a point I should mention. The bigger a gravity field is, um, the more power it consumes. So if you have a ship or whatever, it is advisable to make the gravity field the same size as your ship because that way you will save power. Okay now, I am, well, the easiest way, well not the easiest way, but a good way to um, organize your fields is starting by turning all your generators op off and turning, um, shaping the field one by one. That way you can also see which generator number is which generator. So we've got the button one first. And I want that to be pulling downwards so it's already turned in the right direction and I can simply start shaping the field. Now that's the really annoying bit because you can't really see the field while you're shaping it. You kind of got to wing it. Um, that should actually be 13 meters, yes. I'm not going to explain exactly what I'm doing here, but either you'll guess for yourself or you will see when I'm done. Mm, that looks about right. Now let's turn the next generator on and see which one that is. And that's that one. Now I want that to be pulling towards the direction that the generator is in, which means we have to reverse the field. And then we can start messing up the first generator because I didn't switch. I really hate that it resets to the first one in the list every time. So, third one. Top one, and we also want that to be in the opposite direction, so we set it for minus 1g. Now, start off by making the height, which is about right at 31. Let's see if we can get it to 31.5. And there we go. Our width is this way, so let's just leave that at whatever. And depth should be 21, I believe. Twenty-two it is. And the final one should be the one on our left. So let's just copy the one on the right, so that's 13, 22 and 22. And again, minus 1. Okay, it is... Oh yeah. Um, width and uh, depth does not always affect the same direction because if you have turned it during your builds, um, they will be turned around those two. Which can be quite problematic when you're trying to make something with a bit of precision. Okay, this is not see it's not as precise as I wanted it to be, but it will do. Now some of the ones watching may have guessed what this does, but I shall demonstrate. So when we're at the bottom we got a guard field pushing us downwards, which is lovely. Now since we got two fields intersecting on this side that means that the gravity field will be at a 45 degree angle since the two generators are at a 90 degree angle to each other. Um, and likewise when we go up here we will have just one generator affecting us and so and so all the way around. So this is a great way if you have a um, ship with a large hull and enough time to set up the fields, you can uh, use lice, well, 
all sides of the hall. That's one of the great things about being in space. Uh, yeah, so that is just about everything I've got for now. And I'm really bad at explaining things to people, so if you have any questions, um, post them in the comments or on the forum, and I will do my best to answer. So, thank you for watching.